Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about this device, the ASI Air Pro. Um, I'm not going to be covering this uh, from the perspective of an unboxing or a review as such, really more from the point of view of actually saying there are different ways of imaging. With this particular hobby, there's an awful lot that you need to actually understand. Um, anything from telescopes to cameras to filters to filter wheels, electronic focuses, all of those sorts of things. But fundamentally you've got to have a way of controlling it. And you can use various tools like astrophotography tool which uh, I've, I've been using uh, quite a lot up until now. Uh, things like Nina or SharpCap. Um, and these, this software is absolutely fantastic. Um, but the problem with it is, um, yep, you need a you need a spare laptop. Uh, you need to install all of the ASCOM drivers. You've got to install um, any kind of drivers for your cameras and mounts and things like that. Um, then also the software itself. So you'll need, say, astrophotography tool, uh, PhD, and also if you're using uh, something like a pole master, you've got to install that as well. Um, but what makes this this particular device itself um, so much better is it's all in this box. It's all just ready and there out of the box. This small, uh, basically Raspberry Pi device uh, enables you to just plug all of your kit in, um, supports a, a, a ton of cameras, a ton of mounts um, and various other devices. Plug all of those things in, uh, get uh, an iPad or a tablet or a mobile phone and you can control everything all from that one place. It has everything that you need to be able to image from start to start to finish. So uh, to be able to help you with polar alignment, once you've got your mount set up, uh, you plug everything in, um, open up the uh, application, focus so that you've got good stars. Once you've got that, you can then go through the polar alignment routine. And in that polar alignment routine, it's nice and simple, you basically um, sort of hit go effectively, it will take an image, it will plate solve, it will then automatically, if you've got a go to mount, rotate uh, the mounts round by 60 degrees, take another image and kind of work out where things need to be. And then at that point, you basically use the, um, the azimuth and the altitude adjustment bolts and uh, sort of get things lined up within a particular target. And once you've done that, um, you're all good to go. Uh, that process is, is fundamentally so much more straightforward than trying to bend down, looking through the polar scope, working out where it needs to be at this particular time of year and your latitude, etc. Um, so fantastic from that point of view as well. Um, the, the next thing that you've got sort of in the arsenal is the actual um, application itself. So when you're thinking about what you want to image, uh, there's a nice feature in there which kind of shows you tonight's best targets. Um, you can also select from a, a great number of uh, other targets, anything from the NGC catalogue to the M catalogue, SH2, um, various other things. You can put in your own custom targets, you can keep your own favourites, and um, everything's all in one place. You don't need to sort of uh, connect to Stellarium, um, install EQ mod and make sure that you get those two things working as well. Um, you can sort of control everything again through that um, through that interface. It is also possible to um, use Sky Safari on, say, an iPad or a tablet if you wanted to, um, to be able to sort of uh, find and slew to particular targets. But at the end of the day, you don't have to. So once you've got everything uh, set up, you've uh, got your target, you've selected the target, you've now slewed the telescope over to that uh, target. In order, well, actually, in order to be able to do that in the first place, um, the the system, the ASI Air system, is actually using plate solving for you as well. So you don't need to worry about sort of manually finding a target; it will find that for you. Making parts of astrophotography that that typically could be a bit of an unnecessary pain and not necessarily enjoyable, uh, making those bits easier. Um, so yeah, definitely sort of uh, a good plus point there as well. So once the scope has sort of slewed over to that target and plate solved, um, you can then make sort of finer adjustments if you want. You can then store those uh, such that you can go back to that time and time again. Um, and then you're on to the next stage of actually imaging itself. 
and lots of the uh, sort of photography or astrophotography tools out there that are available on, on PC or on Windows, yep, you can set up imaging plans as well, and you can do all of that from within here too. Um, so if you've, whether you've got a digital SLR or you've got a one-shot color camera or you've got a monochrome camera with a filter wheel, um, it supports all of that and um, it also supports the creation of uh, or the taking of your light frames, your dark frames, your bias frames um, and also the flat frames as well. So yep, setting up that imaging plan, um, everything is in there as well. Um, the one thing that uh, really did impress me with this device when I was uh, sort of using it for the first time uh, was the auto meridian flip. So some people are some people are happy not to do these sorts of things um, at all. Some people really like using them. Um, I like enjoying sort of the the beginning of the evening in terms of setting things up, um, just being outside and just being under the night sky and imaging. However, um, <laughs> I have a job to do, so therefore in the following day I don't want to be really tired, so what um, i really like to be able to do is set the imaging plan off and go and do something else, go to sleep. Um, and with things passing through that meridian line, uh, you need to be able to do that meridian flip. Um, I've tried doing that sort of numerous times with EQ Mod and uh, Astrophotography Tool with varying degrees of success, um, but also it, it was a bit of an effort in actually setting up. Um, with the ASI Air, uh, literally I plugged everything in, gone to the particular target that I wanted to image, and um, checked the checkbox of I want to do an auto meridian flip. Um, it's literally that easy, so when it comes to actually needing to do that, the mount will pause and then eventually it will sort of um, do that flip um, it will then sort of uh, recalibrate and plate solve on that target. It will then um, initiate guiding again and sort of get back to where it was before. Um, so just just that in itself has, um, has helped me gain more hours than I would have been able to um, without sort of literally standing outside and making sure that everything is okay. And then when it comes to the end of the night, um, when yeah it's getting lighter and everything is finished and your plan is finished fundamentally uh, you can get it to um, sort of park the mount and then uh, just shut off the device itself so that will shut off the power to all of the other devices too so um, because you've got um, in this device here um, you've got the four power connectors um, it basically shuts the power off to those so your mount will go off, your camera will go off, literally everything is just um, powered down until the morning when you, you come outside and uh, check your images and, and hopefully everything is good. My biggest criticism of this device and um, a number of other, well literally probably almost anybody who uses this device has, has a problem with it and that is the, um, the, the Wi-Fi range. Um, so you can connect to this either via Wi-Fi or you can also um, attach it to your network as well. Um, and fundamentally the Wi-Fi range is just appalling. There's no external antenna to this. Um, the antenna is probably just literally almost non-existent, but it's fundamentally in a, in a metal box, which is never going to help. Um, so that's the biggest problem that I have, whereby the range is probably a, a few metres as soon as you go inside a um, house, either through a door or through a brick wall, you're going to be lucky if you get any signal at all. You literally have to be stood right next to it. Um, I've worked around this um, just purely by the fact I have some um, sort of Ethernet over power devices that you basically plug them in, they use the power lines in your, um, in your house as basically an Ethernet network um, and then just sort of plugged it into the Ethernet port there and then I have access anywhere in the house. And I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, yep, you just got a dovetail mount there that um, you can uh, fix to your scope. Overall, I've been really, really pleased with this device. Um, you can also go out and sort of make your own version of these things by getting a Raspberry Pi and then in installing a, um, a special distribution there as well. But again, that's kind of it's not really in keeping with, with the purpose of this device in the first place. This is meant to be really easy to use, you can use it out of the box, um, and it does literally all of those sorts of things. 
I definitely will be um, sort of considering the new version of this uh, device that's coming out. Um, so they've got the ASI Air Plus um, that's already released now and you can uh, pre-order that. Uh, fundamentally the differences between um, this device and the ASI Air Plus is uh, they've put some indicators on top of the power ports. Uh, they've finally put an external antenna for the, um, for the Wi-Fi um, and the software has been updated as well but you also get the updated software with this too. Um, also, whenever there's been a firmware upgrade um, and an app upgrade, literally the app's upgraded, it then says it needs to update the firmware, that all happens seamlessly and without any problem at all. So if you want an easier way to image the night sky without the hassle of uh, drivers and all of those sorts of things, then I definitely recommend that you get this. Uh, I hope that you found this video uh, useful and informative. Uh, if you do, please hit the like button. Please put in a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and clear skies.